and welcome back to a new video. Uh, my name is Sean and today we're doing something a little bit different. I've actually got a video I want to talk about on a very controversial video that was just posted by someone very popular, Patrick Bed David, gotten like 600,000 views in a couple of days. Uh, basically he's calling out Dave Ramsey in it. He's, he's making some big um, predictions for the uh, for the real estate market with tons of facts. It's very misleading and uh, for the average person who doesn't work in the real estate industry or in the mortgage industry in particular like me, um, they're, they're going to be very misguided with it. So I wanted to kind of share my opinions um, as we go through a couple of the uh, a couple of the points and hopefully you enjoy it. Hit that like button on this video, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'm gonna jump right into it. But first, if you don't know who Patrick Bet David is, he's essentially an entrepreneur who sold a very large company. I'm selling insurance, I believe. Uh, I think he sold it for like 160 million or something insane like that. Um, and so he talks a lot about how he has nothing to gain with the real estate market because he's not tied to it. Um, we'll talk about motives in a little bit, but he basically posted this video talking about the real estate market and it pissed off a lot of real estate people and uh, get a lot of people talking. So uh, yeah, let's just jump right into it. First off, I love love how it literally takes Patrick Bet David 14, maybe 15 seconds to immediately bring up Dave Ramsey and start making fun of him. I can't knock Patrick Bet David for that. I am not a fan of Dave Ramsey personally. Um, if you've seen some videos on this channel, you'll know why. He does have some good stuff that he talks about, but majority of the stuff he preaches or tries to tell people um, is actually not the best advice. So I love how Patrick Bet David just immediately goes for it. These are like two titans battling right now. You got Patrick Bet David immediately calling out Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey going to be calling out Patrick Bet David. This is what the media likes, and this is kind of why I wanted to make this video. I also want someone to comment on this video, if you can. Comment how many times Patrick Bet David says the word data. He is trying in this entire video to talk about why he's bringing facts, and he has data, and he has all of this data, 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 when in reality, most of the data and facts he's bringing are completely irrelevant to the argument he's trying to make. Free PDF. Choose whatever you want to do, you want to do with it, then make a decision for yourself, because when you're 30 seconds into the video. Now, if you know anything about YouTubers or really people in general, people are always looking after their best interests. I am guilty of it at times as well. You have to be really careful about what advice you actually get you know, you take in. The reason I bring this up is because you can see through a lot of BS in the first 30, 30 to 60 seconds of a video. Patrick Bet David states the reason why he is making this video or what kind of value he has to gain in this video right at 30 seconds, right at 31 seconds. He says multiple times, you know, I've got all these facts, I've got all this data. I put it all into a PDF for you to download. Check the link in the description to click it and go over and download my PDF. This video's sole purpose is not for Patrick Bet David to basically instill all this fear or to make it look like he knows what he's talking about or anything like that. No, the purpose of this video is mainly to grab his viewers' data, to grab their names or emails or phone numbers or whatever. Contact lead forms to eventually sell something to that database or essentially sell that data offer or whatever it might be. So that is Patrick Bet David's primary focus. Now, secondary focus in this video, he does right after this. So if we keep watching, he basically gives you his hook, which is what most YouTubers will do, right? So he goes through all of this, he gives you his hook, he talks about his three keys or whatever it is, predict and blah, 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 blah. And then right at two minutes, 11 seconds or two minutes, 10 seconds, he goes into the second motive. Like I was just saying, he talks about his sponsor. He's got better help. Some big sponsor that paid him tons of money and said, Hey, drive traffic to our website. Here's your upfront, you know, uh, pr promotional money for, for promoting our brand or whatever it is. And then for every sign up, maybe you get an affiliate commission. I'm just making things up. I don't know what it is, but at the end of the day, Patrick Bet David is going to make more money based on how many people view this video. He says multiple times in his video, I don't work in the real estate industry. I am purely doing this to provide facts to people. I'm providing value to people. And yes, you are providing facts, but at the end of the day, you are promoting and driving ratings to your video. This is exactly what media companies do. As you all should know by now, media companies aren't always correct or exact in the data that they are bringing you. And that's because their primary goal is to drive ratings, to drive views, to drive conversation. That's why he's doing all of this in two minutes and 30 seconds of his video. He is solidifying his motive without actually saying it. He immediately calls out Dave Ramsey so everyone knows that there's going to be a fight between Patrick Bet David and Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey's most likely going to be getting involved. It's going to be driving more ratings, more traffic. That's his secondary, right? He's driving tons of traffic to his channel. He's building more ad revenue. He's building more social proof for when he gets new sponsors for future videos, right? He's going to say, hey, I did this deal with BetterHelp. Um, BetterHelp paid me X amount of dollars. I drove a million views in the first week or whatever it might be. So that's his other motive. And then he's also saying, hey, go download this PDF. Download this PDF. 
PDF and, and when you go click on the link and download the PDF, you put in your information and whatever he does with that later is, is what he's gonna do, right? That is what we call a lead magnet in the marketing world. He is doing all of this initially so he knows if someone falls off of my video five minutes in, six minutes in, I've already given him my pitch. I've already kind of did the important things I need to do. Um, and so I'm good with it. Now we're gonna keep watching this um, after this kind of, uh, you know, promo from him, but we're gonna keep watching this and I'm gonna break down a lot of the facts that he mentions while they're not wrong, I'm not gonna say these facts are wrong, but he is very, very, very manipulative, which drives me absolutely insane. And also some of the things that he even talks about has no relation at all to the point he's trying to make. First thing I wanna look at, the loan officer makes money in a couple different ways. One is, so first thing he talks about is mortgage refis, which fits me so well because I run a mortgage company. I don't think there's anyone more qualified than me um, or someone like me to talk about this topic. So he talks about what a loan officer does, right? A loan officer basically is the person who structures and puts together your mortgage. You have to talk to a mortgage lender if you're gonna be financing a home. It typically starts with a mortgage loan officer, not a real estate agent. Um, and essentially a mortgage loan officer in most companies is gonna be paid very similar to a real estate agent in regards to a percentage of the loan amount in our case, real estate agent percentage of the sale or the transaction. So he explains that right here. He explains, here's how loan officers make money, right? And he says, hey, the two main ways that loan officers make money is one, they're gonna be making money with refinances, they're gonna be making money with purchases. That's, again, facts, you're, you're correct. He talks about the percentage that a loan officer might make. You know, a company might make 2% or 3%, loan officer is gonna walk away with 1%. He's talking about this all right now, right? And I'm thinking, what does this have to do? Mortgage application volume was 52.7%. Mortgage loan application was 52% lower. He drops the biggest stat first on mortgage loan application. And of course, rates are twice as much as what they were last year. So, you know, a lot of that is because a lot of people aren't refinancing. Clearly, they're not gonna refinance into a higher rate. And he, he says that right afterwards. He basically says, okay, last week compared to the same period one year ago. Well, of course, mortgage applications are gonna be down because a year ago, rates were a lot lower. And he says that too. Let's see. Mortgage application, which means I may be buying a house and I want a loan for a new mortgage of a house I'm buying. But watch refi. Applications for refis on existing mortgage dropped seven. So applications for refis alone dropped 75% from, from a year ago. Again, these statistics and these data are facts. They are facts. I'm not calling him out on, on the data that he has gotten. Mortgage applications are down 52%. That is a fact. No one is refinancing. But then he follows up and tries to make it look like, well, it's, it's not just mortgage refinance applications. It's also purchases, right? But in reality, of those 52% of mortgage applications that we've seen a decline in, of that 52%, 75% of them are refi. So in reality, it's a very small portion of purchase transactions um, for applications that have actually fallen. And that's not that big of a change. Plus, he also mentions in this video that rates are higher. That means monthly payments are higher. So it's only natural that mortgage applications are gonna be falling. This is what everyone has been preparing for over the last two years. The mortgage industry has seen the biggest boost or gain it has ever seen in the last 50 years. So it's only natural that that massive gain or improvement is not gonna be continuing. The market has to balance each other out and that is what he's doing right now. But he's using these stats as if it is way worse than it is. I personally, as a mortgage loan officer, am not any slower than I was a year ago. It's only changed from doing a ton of refinances to now doing a ton of purchases. We are moving into a buyer's market, which means more people are able to actually negotiate with their sellers. Um, and I'm actually seeing more loans come in the door because it's easier for buyers to actually get under contract. So that stat right there, I hate it. Percent from a year ago, according to the NBA's refinance mortgage application index, according to AI Housing Center, which tracks mortgage applications by the number of rate locks, no cash refis have collapsed. You ready? To add the cherry on the top, he even says right here, the number of rate blocks for no cash refis have collapsed. No, duh, Patrick Bed David. Why would anyone refinance rate and term, not get any cash out and raise their rate? That's absolutely pointless. There's no reason for that unless potentially you're going through a divorce or something like that. There's very little reason why you'd wanna do a no cash out refi when the rates are higher. So that stat in of itself is absolutely useless. I don't know why he talks about it like it's such a big deal. No, duh. Of course, it's gonna be down 93%. Absolutely useless stat. The loan officers, 80% of their income was on refi. The and then here he goes, he talks about even further, that drove me absolutely insane. He basically says, loan officers' income, 80% of their income over the last year was refinances. That might be true, Patrick Bent David, for a lot of the companies who hired loan officers specifically to do refinances. These companies grew massively, mortgage companies grew massively because they had tons of refinance volume. They had to hire people specifically, loan officers specifically, to just handle refinances. He says 80% of a loan officer's income is by refinances. That is false. It really depends on the loan officer that you're talking to. 
I know plenty of loan officers, myself included, who have always been at a very minimum 50% purchase, 50% refinance. Right now, I am 90% purchase in 10% refinance, and I have actually not fallen at all in terms of my overall loan volume. It is the exact same as it was as a year ago. In fact, this upcoming month in August, I'm going to have the biggest month of my entire career so again, it's completely up to what the loan officer was actually focusing on. That's why this stat is absolutely useless. And on top of all of that, it doesn't matter what a loan officer makes, which he goes in right after that. Loan officer making 20 grand, so I'm making four grand a month. Who cares what a loan officer is making? That has no impact on what the market is actually doing. You think a home buyer or a home seller is going, shoot, you know, loan officers are making very little money right now. I should probably not sell my house or I should probably not buy a house or man, the market's going to crash. Those loan officers are not making that much money. I'm, I'm really scared. I'm really nervous. Patrick, but David, man, I, I get, I get you're trying to give some stats, but you got to give some stats that actually make a difference on the market. Absolutely pointless mute point right there. We're just going to skip past the loan officer income because it literally means nothing for the market. $500,000 loan at 6% is two. And then he kind of goes in like I was talking about. He talks about how, you know, a higher interest rate is going to give you a higher monthly payment. Of course, that's why mortgage applications are down. That stat does make sense. You know, 3%, 6%, 9%. The math checks out. That is very normal. Um, inflation is also very high. So if you look at this and you go, well, payments went up, you know, interest rates went up 3%, maybe 6%. Inflation is up like 8%. So if people are getting paid 5%, 6%, 7%, maybe even 9% bonuses or raises because inflation is so high from their employers, this is actually on par and it actually should be relatively normal. Now, it takes takes time, as he mentions in this video, which I'm, I'm okay with that. It takes time for those things to feel normal. Um, but in the grand scheme of a long-term economic effect, those higher interest rates are actually on par with what employers are actually giving right now. He, he talks about in it how, you know, companies were overinflated. They're going to be doing layoffs. People are going to have less income. That is a projection. That is not a stat. He doesn't have any stats about um, company layoffs. He does talk about layoffs with mortgage companies. Again, what mortgage companies are making, we again had 50 years, you know, in the last 50 years, the highest income mortgage companies have ever had. It's only natural to go through layoffs in that industry. But if he had hard stats on what layoffs were doing across all industries, it would make more sense for the point that he's trying to make, but he does not talk about that. He says there's a prediction of higher layoffs coming, a prediction, not facts, a prediction of higher layoffs coming. And if there's more layoffs, then of course, we're gonna have a massive economic downturn. Today, it shows around 5.7% interest rate. If you go back a couple years, you'll see three. He actually, he, he talks about also how mortgage rates have historically been still very low and there's a lot of room for them to increase. And I, I don't disagree with that point. That is definitely um, accurate. Again, that doesn't necessarily mean the market is going to crash. They work independent of each other. And actually, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I actually put out a reel that shows a graph of rental rates. It shows a graph of mortgage rates and shows a house of home appreciation rates. And they all work independently of each other um, as much as people like to think that they work closely together. They do have effects of each other, but it's long-term effects and it's it's not, not a direct correlation. So it talks more about inflation and interest rates and blah, 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 blah. All right, here's this next one that I absolutely hate that he added this in about nine minutes in. He goes, here's a stat. At an unbelievable rate as the market cools and prices drop at the fastest pace, ready, since 2000. So the market cools and prices drop at the fastest pace since 2006. Oh my gosh, I'm so scared. What's going to happen there? Um, well, yeah, Patrick, but David, the market also increased at the fastest pace it's ever done, probably in the history of the housing industry. Um, at least in the last 30 to 50 years, it went up the fastest it's ever been. So if home prices got an appreciation rate of 40% in the last two years, if we took a 20% decline, which is a massive decline in the housing market, but let's say we took a 20% decline in prices, we're still up 20% from two years ago, which is still four times the average appreciation rate that the housing market has been in the last 50 years. That's a fact. Download my PDF. I'm giving you facts, 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 factual data. So again, I hate that stat as well because it basically means nothing. He talks about how home builders are dropping their prices, right? If people are, are listing homes at the you know 20% appreciation rates that we've been seeing over the last year, um, then obviously they're needing to kind of come back to reality and price it more accurately. And that's why we're seeing those price reductions. And also going back to initially what I said at the beginning of this video, you want to always think about what someone's motive is. So Dave Ramsey is very, you know, pro the, the you know, the housing market's amazing. And, and Patrick by David's like, no, the housing market's horrible. You got to think about the narratives each of them are pushing. Patrick De by David, as I mentioned, is pushing ratings, pushing views. Dave Ramsey, on the other hand, he is selling mortgage leads. He is selling real estate leads. He is basically making money with the more people who contact him about, hey, I want to buy a house and he gets them linked up with a real estate brokerage or mortgage company or whatever it might be. Dave Ramsey is also always pushing, hey, you know, you need to get your credit right. You need to take my courses. You need to 
buy my content, do all of this stuff. If no one is going to be buying houses or trying to buy houses, then they don't need to get their credit right. They don't need to kind of handle any of that stuff. So they're always going to be, you know, pushing the very end of the spectrums. Um, and I love how Patrick Bet David has to bring it back up to make sure that uh, everyone knows that he does not like Dave Ramsey. <laughs> to buy a house right now, you may want to wait another year till you buy a house. Just watch this data here and you make a decision for yourself. So this is from Realtor.com. And, and I want to touch on this graph real quick. So we have 2022 in yellow here, right? Um, and he's basically saying, hey, we have so much inventory. There's so many listings, yada, yada, yada. At the rate at which we are getting those listings is a lot. I will not deny that fact. It's got 18.7% on there. That is a fact. That is data. That is data, right? Here comes Patrick by David with his data and facts. But if you look at the actual overall active listings, we are still significantly lower than where we probably should be. And we have just just recently worked our way into a buyer's market. Not all cities, not all states are even into a buyer's market yet. It's still in a seller's market. Now, we'll probably work our way into a buyer's market by the end of this year across the country, but we still aren't there. So at, at the rate at which it's going up is a lot. But you got to look at all of the lines here. You see 2021, we had historically low inventory. You see 2020, we still had low inventory there. Then you see 2017, 2018, 2019, right? Those are probably more average, what people would consider average active listing counts. And we are still so far from that, that once we get to that point, this steady growth rate of going upwards is probably going to change pretty drastically when we see that, oh, wow, there are actually tons of houses for sale. Investors are going to be pouring back into the market. First time home buyers are going to be pouring back in the market because there's going to be so many more options for people to actually buy a house. You see the different colors represent different years, 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I want you to focus on 20. He very quickly grays out all the other graphs as well to try to manipulate the data. So you focus only on the growth, only on the fact that the growth is going up, but you don't look at any of the other lines and see that we're so far off from having a more balanced market. If you own a house, you build a lot of equity for yourself, but here's a challenge. If that's going up, what else has gone up? Construction's gone up, steel. He basically starts going all these industries where home prices have, or prices in general have been going up. Of course, inflation is so high. We've been printing so many months, so much money. Again, this is date. This is information we've already been talking about. This data doesn't come into play when it comes to the housing market. He's just basically trying to put in the fact that, hey, everything is getting more expensive. Yes, again, Patrick McDavid, these are real facts. Inflation is very high. Inflation should be coming back down. That is facts. Everything should be coming back down to a more normal rate. That doesn't necessarily mean things are going to be crashing. But again, this is just more data and facts that he's kind of giving us. Let me continue layoffs. There's layoffs everywhere. And then he goes to only mention mortgage companies. Business with Compass for many, many years. They're great. Compass is letting go 10% of their sales. Compass is, Compass is letting go 10%. Redfin's cutting 10%. Redfin does real estate and also mortgages. High-end uh, community realtors. If you work at Compass, it's very prestigious. They're letting go of 10%. Okay. Redfin announced they're laying off a ton of people. Chase. Another mortgage company. Chase. JP Morgan's doing massive layoffs. And, and you notice he just said they're, they're, they're laying off loan officers. That's actually not true. They're laying off all employees in the mortgage industry. Like I was saying, when mortgage demand falls, there's no reason to have all those, those people in those positions. What he doesn't mention is he doesn't give stats about how many people got jobs in the mortgage industry over the last two years. I bet that stat is far more than how many people are actually getting laid off right now. Six months from now, maybe next year. What, what would you say is the increase in percentage of foreclosures that I hate when he talks about foreclosure right here because this is the definition of data manipulation and most people who aren't in the industry wouldn't really recognize it. Mortgage foreclosures are up 700% and he quote, he, he uses some data source from Adam or whatever. If you look into the actual data source from Adam, first of all, he's doing data manipulation on the actual fact that he's talking about. He says right now, this video is posted in July of 2022. He's really referencing foreclosures from January of 2022 until January of 2021. And that's a big problem for one main reason, okay? During COVID, you were not allowed, banks were not allowed to foreclose on people when they couldn't make their payment. That means that foreclosures were at an all-time low during the pandemic because, again, banks could not foreclose. So if someone wasn't making their payment, there were COVID relief plans, there were a bunch of other mortgage forbearance plans that people could do to essentially not lose their home. Now, that put a halt to pretty much all foreclosures, right? So now he's referencing data that, hey, now banks can actually foreclose on you come January of 2022. So all of those foreclosures that should have happened during 2020, 2021, all happened at the start once the floodgates were open. That's why mortgage foreclosures were up so much. If you actually look at a year ago from today, from July of 2022 to July of 2021, that is not the case. We are not up 700% in foreclosures. This is pure data manipulation. That's 700%. 
and it's just getting started. Okay. He even talks right here. Oh, it's just getting started. Yeah, no, it's not getting started. Oh, and then he quotes the big short. I forgot that he does this. This is absolutely horrible. Now, if you've seen the big short, uh, it's a great movie. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. But they basically go over the whole housing crash and you know, there are a couple people who kind of predicted it. They cashed in big, yada, yada, yada. Now, if you watch the movie, you'll know that the reason the housing market crashed in 2008 was because of mortgages. People were getting mortgages when they should not have been. People had four, five, six mortgages when they shouldn't have even qualified for one. That's the reason the housing market crashed. He talks about these foreclosures are up 700% and it's just getting started and it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And then he kind of drops in the big short and how people from the big short, not the actual actors, the actual people uh, from the big short are saying, you know, oh yeah, they, you know, this is basically what was happening in 2008. And, you know, everyone's saying this wouldn't happen and the market wouldn't crash and yada, yada, yada. The difference between 2008 and now is the fact that it is very challenging to get a mortgage. I do mortgages. I know plenty of people who I personally think would have no problem making this mortgage payment, but for whatever reason, the guidelines are very strict and they cannot get a mortgage. And we have to say, hey, you cannot get a mortgage. You have to do X, Y, Z. Now, back in the day, they didn't have those things. You wanted a mortgage, you had a pulse, you got a mortgage. Nowadays, it's very challenging to get them. So the reason the foreclosures were increasing in the past was because people legit just couldn't make their mortgage. Right now, the reason foreclosures are up is because no one has been allowed to be foreclosed on, so it all happened right at once. So I really hate the fact that he's utilizing this because everyone's heard of the big short, everyone knows what happened in 2008, but they don't know the true cause of it, and they think, oh, we're headed for another 2008. We are not. If we see a correction or a decline in the market, it is not because of people getting mortgages when they shouldn't have. Anyway, what I'm trying to get to, you know, bottom line at the end of this video is basically Patrick Bet David is driving ratings. That is his primary goal. His primary goal is to drive as many views and as much discussion as possible. It's obviously working. Tons of people are making videos about this. Tons of people are me included. Tons of people making videos about it, talking about it, sharing with people, showing it to other people. It's spreading through the real estate industry like wildfire. Um, and he knew that would happen when he gave an opinion or facts about all this because anyone who's not actually in the industry are going to take these facts at, fa at face value and go, holy crud, he's actually correct. I, I, I think the market is going to be crashing. That's good points. Those are good facts. Let me get his fact sheet. Let me get sold from some product from him later. And I have to give Patrick, but David massive credit. His delivery in a video is incredible. The guy knows how to talk into a camera and how to cultivate an audience. He is phenomenal at that. He's been in sales his entire life. He's incredibly good at it. Um, so I can't knock him there. I felt like if I didn't know what I was doing in the real estate industry, I would have been eating out of this guy's hand. And if you actually look at the comments on this video, everyone who's watching this are eating out of his hand as well. They see these stats. They see what he's saying. They, they are basically taking his delivery in and going, holy cow, we're heading for the worst thing ever. Ah, and it's just so much manipulation. It drives me nuts. Now, to kind of uh, put some ending thoughts on this, you know, a lot of people are, are pretty much been reaching out to me and saying, hey, what, what are your thoughts on the market? I get a lot of my investors calling me weekly. A lot of first-time home buyers will call me and say, hey, I don't know if now's the right time for, for buying a house or, or what are your thoughts on the market? And, you know, basically I tell everyone the same thing. You know, you, you can never time things perfectly. Patrick Bet David even says that in his video. You can never time things perfectly. Um, and he talks about kind of getting things cheaper when you can. I always say, if it makes sense for you to purchase a house and buy a house, if it doesn't make sense to purchase a house and don't buy a house, it doesn't matter what the market's doing. It matters what you're doing and what's going to be financially responsible for you. And if that's home ownership, then great. If it's not, then go rent. It's, it's not like you should be trying to time the market because it's impossible. I personally will always be purchasing homes. You know, I'm 26 years old. No matter what the market is doing, there, I, there, it'd have to be almost the apocalypse for me to not want to buy a house. I'm going to be constantly purchasing more and more real estate until I get to the age of probably 40, 45 years old. And at that point, I'd kind of think, okay, is it in my long-term strategy to be continuing to buy or should I be maybe just holding on with what I have? Should I maybe even be selling at that point? That's when things become you know, a little more convoluted, a little more strategy involved, but time is always on your, on your favor. Um, you know, the market's going to go like this. It's always going to go like this every couple of years. So as long as you're going to be holding real estate, you're probably going to be okay. Again, this is not financial advice. This is not, you know, I'm giving you big data and facts and all this stuff and the market's not going to crash. I'm not saying that the market could see a correction. It could see a decline. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that you need to actually understand what you are listening to in this case, or what you are consuming media wise, because Facts don't always necessarily matter when you're cultivating an argument. If you talk to any attorney or you even look at, I mean, there's tons of lawyer movies and shows now, you know, they bring up facts and things that aren't always necessarily relevant, but it 
draws on people. It pulls people in when you say the word fact, when you show a fact. Patrick Bet David's facts are legit facts. He is not making these facts up. He is manipulating these facts and basically utilizing facts that don't actually give you good market insight. Now, he relates a lot to the 2008 crash, and the last thing thought I'll give you is we are not headed for a 2008 market crash. If the market corrects or goes down, it is not because of the fact that people can't make their mortgage payments. That is the last reason why I am in the mortgage industry. I can confidently tell you that people getting mortgages are well qualified for those mortgages. I mean, just, just always take what you're consuming and what you're seeing online or just from anyone in general, even in person with a little bit of a grain of salt. Um, hopefully you found this video helpful. I know a lot of people are talking about this video right now. I wanted to give my two cents. I wanted to give my opinion on it. Um, you know, being in the mortgage industry and just kind of seeing the manipulation that was going on in that really, really made my blood boil. So, Again, hopefully you found value in this video. If you did, please hit that like button. Um, please comment down below your thoughts. And uh, otherwise, I will see you in the next video.